Yeah. Everything that Porsche, Ferrari, and the rival Aston team could throw at them, they stood up against it and they came out on top. And that's a huge, huge effort for what is really quite a small British-based team. And Johnny Adam, by the way, it's uh, another man that uh, puts his name in the history books with two class wins in two different classes, both GTE classes now. Yep. Well, on his CV. Breaking out the tonics on behalf of him and Paul de Resta. And Sam, uh, not Sally sure Yorks. what the national food of Leamington Spa is, but I'll, I'll give Johnny a wave it'll next be, time I run by his house. It'll yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, it will be chips. <laughs> so got to feel sorry, by the way, for the G-Drive racing crew. That was yeah. cruel. That was a cruel way to finish that race. And for the number seven Toyota, again, halfway through, almost 12 hours in, made in the shade. They were doing everything right. They had the pace. And then suddenly, Lady Luck turned her back on them and said, no, this year it is not you. And another one deserving of that level of sympathy. The Team Project One guys, the uh, Matteo Caroni in particular, yep. cruel way, having made that gap, lost it with a safety car and just did not have the car underneath him at that point to battle to save his second or even third place. Yeah. He will not finish on a podium. Barring a safety car, they may well have finished in second position. That will have some effect as well in the title defense for Egidio Perfetti and his teammates. But for TF Sport and Aston Martin, they will still be second in the championship behind the 83 AF Corsa car that finished third. But the gap comes down below 20 points as we head to the season finale in Bahrain. So suddenly, there's another great tantalizing lure. First Turkish driver to win Le Mans, Sally Yolik? Uh, yes, uh, be, uh, first Turkish driver to start Le Mans uh, when he <laughs> okay. came some years well, ago. It, There's it, not been one since. So in that case, that makes it fairly easy to have a bit so of maths. That will be a big story at home, I'm absolutely certain of it. And he chalks up yeah. another significant win, the Five Nations Cup, yep. a couple of years ago. Yeah. And now Le Mans, 24 hours. Wow, wow, wow. Look at those boys. There's Brendan Hartley in the Michelin Cup on the top of the car. Sebastian Buemi, a three-time Le Mans winner with Kaz Nakajima. <laughs> I think Kaz summed it up right. Wow, the luck. You know, we say it all the time. You can bring the best car, the best team, the best drivers. If you don't have the best luck, just ask number seven. Ask Toyota. 30 years plus now, 35 years nearly, this story has been continuing of trying to win, trying to win, trying to win, and then finally winning Le Mans. And now it seems they can't stop. Well, one chapter closes, another will open for them. But uh, chapter closing for good for Rebellion Racing. They finish in second and fourth position. They fought a good fight, second and third, until the closing stages of this race. Still their best ever result here. Yep. United Autosports rise and rise in LMP2 just continues. Oh boy. Next to them, the 97 car. Well, world champions. They are world champions. Uh, it is second victories, of course, we said for Harry Tinknell, Johnny Adam, both of them in two different classes. It is the uh, Aston Martin Racing's be uh, best results across classes at Le Mans ever. <laughs> Maxime Martin giving Alex Lynn all the chip. <laughs> and Harry Tinkle there as well, celebrating victory. These guys, those two, Alex Lynn and Maxime Martin, are FIA World Endurance Championships in GT Racing, uh, World Endurance Champions. And Aston Martin Racing AMR claim the team's title in GTE Pro as well. One race to go, and it will be a valedictory performance for them. <laughs> there you go, Johnny <laughs> Adam. Well done, baby. And Sally Yolik wrapped in the Turkish flag, the red with the white crescent, dives in to embrace Charlie Eastwood, who I think probably, if he's got anything about him, is trying to pretend he hasn't been sobbing like a baby on the inlap. Yeah, that was Alex Lynn, I think, congratulating the yep. GTM team as well. Yep. Close knit group. Big day for Aston Martin. Johnny Eastwood and Johnny Adam both with Aston Martin factory, co factory contracts. See Johnny, uh, see Johnny Van there back against the wall, sitting down beside the G-Drive car that so let him down in the closing stages. Very different emotions from just a few years ago now. 
Yeah, for Kaz Nakajima. Bit of heartbreak, followed by three straight wins. Team presidents. Yeah. Just amazing, amazing. They will, whilst we've got one race left, be turning their focus now to preparing for 2021. Yes. And a whole new era. A whole new era is right. There's Charlie. Go on, Charlie, tell me you weren't sobbing. God, he worked hard for that, though, didn't he? Look at him, he's absolutely dripping wet. Congratulations being offered there by Kazuki uh, by Kazuki Nakajima. It's Toyota's Kamui Kobayashi going with over to shake their hands. He does not yet know what it feels like to win Le Mans, but these guys do. On the left, Sally Yolick. In the centre, Johnny Adam. On the right, Charlie Eastwood. And these guys too, Phil Hansen and Felipe Albuquerque. What an awesome pairing these two have been over the last three years. Graham Goodwin, when they won in ELMS at Spa, it was their third straight win in LMP2 at Spa. Then they went on to win. It's just streak after streak yeah. after streak. It's in, uh, it WEC is. and, and uh, now here at Le Mans, I mean, unbelievable. And of course, they still have the remainder of the European Le Mans series to contest. Yep, two more races to come. Monza and Portimao. Manueli Piro in the uh, blazer and the blue shirt. Our Grand Marshal this weekend. And the president of the FIA, of FIA the ACO, beg your pardon, Pierre Fion. Yeah, I think uh, John Tott just perked up in his chair when you said that. It's yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, <laughs> great to see. The motion is always a huge part of the end of this great event. And a BRDC superstar. And another BRDC superstar, in fact, Charlie Eastwood and Phil Hansen. So Felipe and uh, Paul de Rest are there. If we thought we were, they weren't going to stop, he's now second analysing what they thought was going to happen. I, 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 you know what? Quietly, privately, I'm going to have a quiet chat with a couple of people at Chota. I think there was a little bit of... Kidology? Oh, yeah. Well... Well, why wouldn't you? Alan had recalculated that he thought they didn't need to stop either, but uh, there you go. Gustavo Menezes, and closest to us, Bruno Senna there, Rebellion Racing, with Norman Nato finishing in second place where they started splitting the Toyotas. And just over 24 hours ago, Toyota number seven, leading away from pole position. And then in Gen the end... Gentlemen in the background uh, is Alex Pesci, the owner of Rebellion, the man behind the vision that became this team. More than a decade here, and some great days. This is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Aston Martin winning in GTE Am. Aston Martin winning in GTE Pro. United Autosports winning in LMP2. And Toyota Gazoo Racing victorious outright, winning LMP1 and LMP1H. 387 laps, final total. What's the record distance? Just 394. Okay. Am I right? Uh, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. You're the man with the plan, Stan. I'm sure Twitter will tell us. Well, of all the teams that you would commiserate with, you have to think a lot about the Porsche GT squad. Like Aston Martin last year, facing 24 hours that couldn't end fast enough. Well, Antonio Felix da Costa doesn't exactly look crushed by finishing second for Jota Sport. And in the tyre battle in LMP2, Michelin came out on top, but Goodyear cars finishing in second and third places. So they had two podium finishers at Le Mans. It all goes into the knowledge banks for next season for Goodyear. And there is the winner of the 2020 Le Mans 24 hour race and the class winners joining him 
There's the moment that they all barely dared breathe before the car crossing the line. Philippe Albuquerque hugging Zach Brown. Somewhere buried in there, Richard Dean, I'm sure, with a tear in his eye. Here are the classified pools results. 397 laps. Number eight, Toyota, victorious by five laps from the number one, Rebellion. A lap behind them, the number seven, Toyota, just half a minute ahead of the Rebellion. United Autosport finished fifth overall, winning LMP2 from Jota and Panis. And just in 20th place at the end, Aston Martin Racing at 97, winning Le Mans winning the World Championship as well, ahead of AF Corsa's 51 car and the 95 Aston finishing in third. Ferrari taking a body blow as the 97 car, uh, 71 car failed to finish the final lap. TF Sport in 24th place, winning in GTE Am, ahead of Dempsey Proton, Porsche and AF Corsa Ferrari. And the battle for Am honours continues in Bahrain, AF Corsa lead by a slender margin over TF Sport. Bruno von der Stick welcomes our winning trio of drivers onto the podium. Familiar territory for Kazuki Nakajima, for Sebastian Buemi, and now for Brendan Hartley. The crew of number seven come on first. And again, familiar territory for them, just not yet on the middle step. Jose Maria Lopez, Kamui Kobayashi, and Mike Conway. What do they have to do? Who do they have to bribe? what prayers and incantations will be required to get them from leaders at 12 hours to leaders at 24. Well, there is the other Toyota team. We seem to have skipped one of the Rebellion crew not there. Here they are. Normanato brought the flag, uh, the car across the line that he shared with Gustavo Menezes and Bruno Senna. They finished in second place, the best overall result for Rebellion at Le Mans. And our victors in the number eight Toyota, Sebastian Buemi, Brendan Hartley, and Kazuki Nakajima. So Senna, Nato, and Menezes. The Japanese anthem for our winning toy team, Toyota Gazoo Racing. On the right of the shot there, Brendan Hartley in the centre, Kaz Nakajima, and on the left, Sebastian Buemi. Congratulations, Toyota Gazoo Racing, winning here at Le Mans, and also winning in WRC, Elfin Evans, another British victor today, winning in Rally Turkey. It's a fine swan song for Rebellion Racing here at Le Mans. One more race in their world endurance history. That's going to be emotional in Bahrain. They finish in second position. And the number seven Toyota crew finishing in third. Host Mary Lopez, Kamui Kobayashi and Mike Conway. Uh, this is the second 
uh, the, the, the last hat trick we had for winners, first drivers to do that since uh, Tom Christensen, Frank Beeler, and Emmanuel Piro, the Grand Marshal this week in 2000, 2002. And for the car, it matches the hat tricks the W Sierra we've seen from both the R18 and the 919 hybrid. So all three of the initial manufacturers manage that feat by the end of the hybrid era. Well, grown men and grown women across the world, whether you are veteran Le Mans fans, viewers, campsite inhabitants, or first time newbies, thank you for being with us throughout this long and very strange weekend of racing. It hasn't really been a week, it's barely been two and a half days, I think, since we arrived and now suddenly we're on our way. Our whole production team here, led, led by Olivier Denis, our director, all the camera crews, our pit lane reporters, Hayley Edmonds and Alex Legui, our experts in the box, Jamie Campbell-Walter, Peter Dumbreck and Alan McNish, from Graham Goodwin, from Ben Consinjuris and from me, Martin Haven. Thank you for your company, for your understanding, and on behalf of our teapot, for your sympathy. It will be given a Viking funeral, by which I mean lobbed in the nearest bin. Le Mans, again, has favoured the number eight Toyota crew. For two years, they won with Fernando Alonso, and the spell was not broken by Alonso walking away and Brendan Hartley walking gratefully into that winning combination. The end of an era at Le Mans, but not yet the end of this car's racing career. We rejoin for the final round of the FIA World Endurance Championship in Bahrain in December. And we will see then who our other world champions are. For the number seven team now, it is win to take the title. That is absolutely critical. In the GG Pro class, Aston Martin with the team's title and the driver's crown. In GTEM, it is close between TF Sport, who chase AF Corsa. And in LMP2, well, as this race has shown, just about anybody's. There is the big trophy. Is it still the deal, Alan, that if you win it three in a row, you take the trophy home? Well, I hope one of them's got a bit of overhead locker space. No, that goes back to Cologne, to Toyota. From the driver's side of it, uh, they get some beautiful trophies as well. But that particular one will be sitting in TMG and Toyota uh, very, very proudly very soon. You think they'll be allowed to keep it in Cologne? That trophy will be going back to Japan very soon. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very valid point. I think the uh, I think I can feel a replica coming on. It's an impressive sight to see those things. Uh, but uh, your team's home, Neuburg, three of them, uh, amazing trophy cabinets. Is it what three stories tall? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the height of uh, the standard building, and uh, it's something that they're very very proud of every single time here, every single podium, and uh, Here's the our champions. Drivers' championship then. The crew of number eight move in front, Hartley, Nakajima and Buemi. And it is a seven point spread for the title. And he's gonna make the 14th of November. Beg your pardon, I misspoke. And as ever, Fiona okay, Miller is there with all the accurate details. George Gazoo Racing, no, a long way in front in the team's championship that uh, 60 points on offer. They need three points, I think. Remember, from it's Bahrain. points and a half for the race. Oh, so it is. It's so eight. it is still up for grabs then. So it's not the 25 to 18 splits yeah. this time. So Toyota looking to round out the World Championship again in Bahrain in November. So two months from now. And on their present form, Maybe, just maybe, the number eight team have swung it in their favor. It's always good to be leading going into the final race. Nothing is guaranteed. That much the number seven crew know they were leading the points coming in here. They led halfway through the race, and it still didn't reward them. The number seven crew highly motivated. Now, there's not a question of whether or not you decide between 
Le Mans win or a world championship, they've got to go for the latter. Yep. And a win, in whatever circumstances, would secure that. Yep. Well, the Le Mans win taken away from them, it's something they will still have to chase. But as Alan McNish would definitely vouch, being able to be a world champion is also something that every racing driver wants. And the crew of the number seven will spare absolutely no effort to take that title away from the number eight crew. And they'll feel that maybe it should be theirs because number eight again have been smiled on here at Le Mans. So that's our overall podium, the top three cars, Toyota number eight, Rebellion number one, Toyota number seven. In the GTE Pro category, Aston Martin racing first and third. Between them, the 51A of Corsa Ferrari. Risi Competizione finished fourth, and in the end, the beleaguered Porsche GT team, fifth and sixth. A of Corsa 71 car stopped on the very last lap, the last half of the last lap, and is not classified. The WeatherTech Ferrari crashed out of the race by an errant LMP2 car in traffic, and it never recovered from that nighttime blow at Terre Rouge. And that's heartbreaking for them. One of just two teams to make it across the Atlantic here to Le Mans. But the World Endurance Champions, the manufacturers, GTE champions are Aston Martin Racing. And when I drive up the M40 past Banbury tomorrow morning at around seven in the morning, the Union flag had better be proudly flying outside ProDrive HQ. The Dane Train finish third with Nicky Team, he of the wild hair and the tire licking, with Marco Sorensen and with Richard Westbrook, Bath now clearly part of Denmark. And Aston Martin's winning combination come out on the top step of the podium as well. Alex Lynn, Maxime Martin, and Harry Tignall. And that's two legendary 24-hour races now for Maxime Martin. His father and his uncle have both won at Spa, as he has. Neither of them have also won at Le Mans. Not least because three Union flags are flying. One also over the AF Corsa Ferrari team. In the same way that Richard Westbrook isn't actually a Dane, I'm not sure Amato Ferrari is actually British either. However... Yeah. Uh, David King, by the way, there for Aston Martin with the winning crew. Yeah. The uh, Vice President of the Special... Uh, Chief Special Operations Officer looks after all of Aston Martin's motorsport programmes. Yeah. Captain motor racing, basically, uh, and he'll be heading to the Nürburgring 24 hours for next weekend. Properly lovely bloke. Hot too. in the uh, wheel tracks of Peter Dumbreck, who's already, already sent himself off in that way. So, to beat this next year, Aston Martin Racing basically have to be Formula One world champions, I think, don't they? Or at least win the British Grand Prix. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the those. biggest them on, though. Yeah, true. Mind you, a 20-race world championship would almost be covering the same distance for an Aston Martin Formula One car. AMR, the boys and girls, the men and women there, and you can see the TF Sport crew down there as well, waiting for their drivers to come up and celebrate victory. And the A, of course, 51 team, James Collado, Alessandro Pierre Guidi, the former world champions, they know exactly what that feels like, don't they? And they have Daniel Serra with them on the podium here. Runners up at Le Mans. Great race. For those three. Broke. Yeah. Harry Tinknell, Maxime Martin, and Alex Lynn. What a moment. Boy done good, Alan. Boy done good.
Yep, they all did very, very good. Very hard fight in GTE Pro as ever, but uh, critical points. They managed to get ahead and then hold it, and uh, all three deserved that victory. But for Aston Martin Racing, it was a very important victory, I think. Uh, in so very many ways. Yep. Well, this team has been associated with Aston Martin through all sorts of de various different racing eras, haven't they? From that fabulous V12 prototype through the GT field. Customer cars racing in GTE, in GT3, in GT4, in national and international championships, in global championships. And now they are world champions, drivers and teams and two cars on the Le Mans podium a red letter day for Aston Martin did, did, did they win a rally anywhere yet no okay <laughs> maybe that'll come Marco Sorensen Nicky team the world champions Alex Lynn Maxi Martin second place and Alessandro Pierguidi and James Collado in third so the Danes are the champions <coughs> the world endurance champions and their teammates are the champions here at Le Mans AMR with the title tied up ahead of Porsche and Comp uh, Ferrari in third place, but not by much. That's going to be a very tight battle, and that battle for second spot could go either way easily in Bahrain. I'm pretty sure that the driver's title is not yet done. Um, oh, is it not? No, I don't think so. I think it closes up. Their, their drivers are now 1-2. Well, they're all going to smell like champions, <laughs> whether they get to drink anything or not. Don't forget there are no bars open in the paddock or anywhere else here on site. We are in a very secure bubble. United Autosports victorious in LMP2. Jota ran them very close in the final stages. And Panis Racing, well, they came from right out of the backfield to claim a remarkable podium with a failure for the G-Drive car that dropped them down, not to fourth, but fifth behind. Senior Tech Alpine stop us after one lap at Le Mans with what looked like maybe a terminal problem. Edexport sixth overall with a car that was rebuilt into a brand new tub on Friday. And their second car that was also almost written off, finishing just outside the top 10. Testament to how hard mechanics work, even to get cars to the start line Never mind to the finish line. If United Autosports, the potential 1-2 in the middle of the night, evaporated with problems for the number 32 car, but 22 held on strong. Very different LMP2 race than we used to here. Attrition, yeah. drama, right to the end, and the emotion involved there. We said it early on, it was more like LMP 675 when cars would, you know, you think would barely, any of them would ever make it through to the end. And for a degree, it looked like every team had to have some mandatory problem. But these guys had the least of them. Felipe Albuquerque, Philip Hansen, the points leaders. Now, Paul DeResta didn't do all the races with them, but he is still ahead of Antonio Felix da Costa and Roberto Gonzalez for Jota Sport. And Davidson hasn't done all the races with them either, so he's in fourth ahead of the racing team Netherlands duo. Fritz van Erd, Geert van der Garde have been together all the time, but Nick de Vries hasn't been in the car the whole time. United, Jota and Racing Team Netherlands are the top three ahead of Cool Racing, Jackie Tian, DC Racing who could so easily have won this race on pace. And Senior Tech Alpine, their chance of defending last year's win evaporated very early in the race, lap one. Indeed. And as we said a little in the broadcast, the first British privateer team to take a WC title. And I think got to be Phil Hansen, the youngest ever WC champion. <laughs> Hard to think anybody else might be. Well, these guys are thoroughly depressed about being on the podium, <laughs> aren't they? The Panis number 31 crew. And it's been a story of coming not even really from the midfield. If we look at some of their results from the early hours, they were in nowheresville. All French team and delighted to be there. United Autos, why is he calling third first and then second? Is that a distancing thing? Anyway, the winners come out. Zach Brown with them, Richard Dean down there in the crowd with the team applauding them with the boys and girls from United Autosport. 
because like so many teams, so many of these crews have got male and female engineers working on the cars. Hopefully more male and female driving lineups coming through as well. Antonio Felix de Costa getting used to international podiums, but not this one. Yeah. Well, this Davidson. is a very different view from the winner's podium in Berlin. She stood on top of winning races and the title in Formula E just a month or so ago. They pushed hard. They made a yeah. fight of this. And Davidson, Roberto Gonzalez and Antonio Felix de Costa second place. And our winners are United Autosports. Congratulations to United Autosports. The winning avalanche continues. Talk about a team on peak form. Jota Sport never, ever out of the equation, either with 38 or 37, the Jackie Chan DC racing car that was so dominant in the first half of the race. But like the seven Toyota, fortune did not favor them. It favored these three guys. Phil Hansen. Paul de Resta and Felipe Albuquerque. And Hansen and Albuquerque on target potentially for a European Le Mans Series championship wins and FIA World Endurance championship win. And if you add Le Mans 24 hour victory into that, I think it's hard to contemplate a better season. The mutual respect from these teams, overwhelming. Everybody knows how hard a grind it is just to get to the start line at Le Mans, never mind to make it through to the finish. And even before they taste the champagne, you're my best mate, mate. It is, it's that emotional it moment, is. isn't it's, it? It is raw emotion, utter exhaustion and raw emotion. Yeah. That's what it means to Roberto Gonzalez. Yeah. There will, of course, be disappointment, but it's great to see the joy that comes with it. So close. So close. But the great thing with Le Mans is he can always come and try again. A blink of every <laughs> selfie. That's how that works, mate. Yeah. yeah, he's got a wet finger, so it's just not taking the pictures for him. Well, it's been a great season for Antonio Felix da Costa, and a great guy to have a great season. Former E champion, now runner up at Le Mans, and barring a couple of litres of fuel, what might else have happened? Parabens to Felipe Albuquerque and the rest of the crew of the 22 United Autosports Orica. To Zach Brown and Richard Dean for putting this program together and for giving the team, Gary Robert Shaw and the rest of the United Autosport crew, everything they needed in terms of backup, in terms of finance, to go out and get the driver combinations, the engineering crew that make all this possible. What next? What other challenges? Well, we know some of them, but uh, what's the next challenge here at Le Mans? It's the GTM classification. Yeah, and again, a red letter day for a small, ambitious and hugely busy team in any normal season, that is. TF Sport, Aston Martins starting to adopt that sort of semi-regular rule if you've got a GT race and there's no TF Sport, Aston Martin is in actually a race. It's almost like AF Corsa, not in volume, 
but in the fact that they almost always are there. We're getting to the stage with TF Sport. We have to remember which titles they haven't won. <laughs> well, there are some unique firsts there for them. It's a first Le Mans victory, a first Turkish driver ever to start and to win Le Mans with Sally Yolik. It's the first ever customer uh, Aston Martin team to win in the modern era. Here are the endurance championship points. Charlie East with Johnny Adam, Sally Yolik lead from Manu Collar and Francois Perodo and Nick Nielsen. I thought it was going to be the other way around, but in fact, that is the way it is. Eight point spread going into Bahrain. Christian Reed, Matt Campbell, Ricardo Pera, the 77 car, finishing in, third, in second place here. They are third in the title race. TF Sport lead AF Corsa by eight. Dempsey Proton 77 next up. The 90 AMR car tied with them on points and it's close behind between the team Project One cars. 83, they were close, weren't they? They never quite led really at any stage. It almost always seemed like Aston Martin had a tiny bit in hand. But when it came down to it, in the clinch, in the final 30 minutes after the last safety car was released, oh boy, they had enough to get on the podium. Dempsey Proton taking second. A great final few minutes by Matt Campbell, but Charlie Eastwood and his teammates never flaked. Sally Yolik, as ever, did great work in the car, and Johnny Adam, never a bad addition to any Aston Martin lineup. His second Le Mans win in an Aston, his first narrowly over Corvette Racing in GTE Pro, and this time not quite so narrowly, but within striking distance of the 77 Dempsey Proton Porsche. There is Johnny, Scottish born, Leamington Spa resident. Sally Yollock lifting young Charlie Eastwood high in jubilation. If I'm right, I think that means that the championship now goes down between the 83 uh, Ferrari and the TF Sport car. I don't think the 77 can make it now. Nick Nielsen on the left, Francois Perodo in the centre. He's the glue in this lineup. And of course, Manu Kalar, he is the experienced head. He's Been there, done that, seen it all. Sixth podium, I believe, for Manu, and this is his 24th start at Le Mans. Now, when I said been there, done that, seen it all, I didn't realise quite that many times. <laughs> He's still only 33, isn't he? 77 Dempsey Proton, there's Christian Reed. The effervescent boss of this team, Matt Campbell, Ricardo Perra. Ricardo Perra and Nick Nielsen, by the way, on the podium on their debuts at Le Mans. Yeah, and again, this Dempsey team, the Proton engineering team, they never, ever stop racing. They never stop loving GTs and they never stop loving Porsches. Johnny Adam there celebrating in a very different coloured uniform to the last time he was on the top step of a podium at Le Mans with an Aston Martin crew. Comes out with Sally Yollock and Charlie Eastwood. There's Sally on the top step of the podium and the anthem for the winning team, TF Sport. Man in the white shirt, TF himself, Tom Ferrier, former single season racer, raced in British Formula 3. Very quick peddler as well, but didn't have finance behind him to progress much further. And ended up turning his passion for racing into a very successful sports car program. TF Sport run a good team in a lot of good championships. And this undoubtedly is his greatest professional day, victory at Le Mans. Three class wins for British teams. Sally Yolok, first ever Turkish winner of any class here. Have to go look at the record books to see where Charlie Eastwood ranks for Irish winners in class. There will not have been that many, but uh, quite a day for 
the little team that could. Phil Hansen, we believe, the youngest world endurance champion. So congratulations to him. Congratulations also to all our GTE AM podium finishers. And to everybody else who came, who saw, who conquered, who stumbled, who was let down by machinery, by fate, who was caught up in accidents not of their own making. To everybody who has helped us produce these TV pictures, the huge crew that has been here working in a very strange situation in very tight times. To everybody from the ACO for making this happen. On behalf of the whole ACO TV crew, Thank you for being with us. Final words of the broadcast with Alan McNish and Graham Goodwin. I'm Martin Haven saying thank you to them, to Ben Constantiris, to Jamie Campbell-Walter, to Peter Dumbreck, to Hayley Edmonds, to Alex Legui, to Olivier Denis and the entire TV crew. Well done, guys, in the trucks and out on the tracks. From Le Mans 2020, au revoir.